Okay, let's talk about which answer is correct. And the problem is the following, and here we have two answer choices. So when x is equal to negative 1, what is the value of negative x squared? Okay, so we have this expression, negative x squared, and we're going to let x is equal to negative 1. We're going to assign x the value. Negative 1, and we plug this in, and we go ahead and simplify this. We're going to get either negative 1 or positive 1 as the answer. Okay, now there might be some other folks that can get some other answers out here, but as the title um, of this video is, states that this is a very easy problem for a lot of people to um, to get wrong. And over the years, I don't know if it's 99%, but most people have made this error. And the whole purpose of this video is to have you think about it and then obviously learn something so we do not have you make that error and you end up with one of these on your little math quiz or math test. So we're gonna get into that in just one second, but first let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math, and as you probably already figured out, I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over many years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the most robust, comprehensive uh, math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of this um, if you're interested. You can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, I offer several courses, full co comprehensive courses. And of course, if you're taking a uh, separate math class and need assistance, I can help you as well. And the main thing I think that really makes my program stand out is I really focus on teaching you how to solve um, the most common problems in middle and high school mathematics. I literally solve thousands of problems. So if you're interested, again, you can find the link to my math help program in the description of this video. Now, let me talk real quick about math notes, because uh, I'm kind of assuming that you are a math student if you're watching this video. But uh, over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is apparent to me, those students with the best math notes almost always get the best math grades. And the reverse is true. Those students who have sloppy math notes, no math notes, just struggle taking math notes. And if that's you, guess what? That was we, me back in school before I really understood the value of taking notes. And of course, as a teacher, you really, really understand this. But uh, you got to start here. If you really want to do well in math, you got to take a look at your notes. But um, if you've been struggling in this area, you need something to study from. So I actually offer comprehensive math notes. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find a link to those in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's get into this problem. So for the most part, as I indicated, 99% of the students is, uh, that have you know started learning algebra will typically make this mistake. Okay, and then you know a lot of those students, especially those ones who would take good notes, will be like, oh, I don't do this again. So in other words, uh, a lot of people will think they're doing this right. But in fact, they are, they're not. And if you continue to, you know, interpret what's going and going on here in a general way, you're going to you're going to end up making a lot of math mistakes. Okay, so I hope you had a chance to kind of just think about it. Okay, when x is equal to negative one, what is negative x squared? Uh, what is that equal to? Most students are going to give give me either negative negative one or positive one. And let's go ahead and explore this now. So the questions can kind of come in two flavors here. So you can see it this way. I can have this as a uh, function. So I can give you the function f of x is equal to negative x squared. And uh, the question could be find um, the value of f of uh, when f is equal to negative 1. Okay, so this is the situation that we're looking at. But you might see it in this kind of question form. Okay, so okay, I got to plug in a uh, negative 1, but into this expression because this is the value of the function. Now, if you are not familiar with functions, you might see this same question in this way. So you'll have this word evaluate. Evaluate negative x squared for x is equal to negative 1. Here and here, you're doing the same, the same process is being applied, but you can have um, just a variation of the question. Okay, again, we're still talking about plugging in a, a negative x, uh, or sorry, negative 1 into this negative x squared, and we're trying to figure out the value, okay? All right, so let's go down here and uh, take a look at our two options, right? So what is negative x squared when x is equal to negative one? This is even another way to kind of, you know, express this question. So we have kind of two 
basic paths. This is what most students do. They follow one or two uh, paths here. So we have negative x squared and our negative x squared. We can either go, okay, I'm going to plug in. Uh, I know x is equal to negative 1. So I can set up the problem this way. So I'm going to let this, I got this x here. I'm going to plug in a, a negative 1 like so. And then I'll figure this out in a second. Or I just plug it in like this, okay, a negative of a negative 1 squared. So for example, if I had x plus 3, and I told you uh, when x is equal to negative 1, some students will go negative 1 plus 3, and they'll figure that out. Or some students will uh, go negative 1 with parentheses plus 3. Now, I'm making a very important point here. And if you have not um, uh, watched some of my previous videos, if you're new to my YouTube channel, one, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. But you're going you're gonna to know that I'm a huge, huge um, stickler on when you plug in values into a variable, use parentheses, okay? Use parentheses. So here, if x is equal to negative 1 and we want to figure out what x plus 3 is, some students will just plug in the negative 1 for x just like this. Okay, you're going to get the same answer. And some students will plug it in with the parentheses, okay? Now, uh, there are times where you, once you're really, really astute, and, you know, really practice evaluating um, functions and expressions with numeric values, you can kind of sometimes not use parentheses. But I'm going to tell you right now, always use parentheses. When you're plugging in values for um, numeric values for variables, use parentheses. So, of course, I'm kind of tipping you off which is kind of going to be right and which is going to be wrong here. So this person here um, can very well make an error. All right, and this is a common approach to to um, plugging in numbers for values. In other words, with my x plus three, most students would be like, okay, x is equal to negative one, x is negative one plus three, and I get it. It seems like common sense. I'm going to get the right answer here. It's going to be two. Okay, but you got to use parentheses. So let's just go through this logic here. Here's what I've seen. I'm not saying it's right. Obviously, this is wrong, but this is where a lot of students will interpret this. They'll go, okay, a negative times a negative, that's like a positive 1. Okay, 1 squared is 1. Okay, so they'll give me this answer. Okay, so I could see, you know, and they're, they're looking at it because they see this negative and negative, and they're like, okay, negative 1. Da, da, da. I'm trying to kind of express the, the interpretation of the wrong logic here, right? But this is... A very typical answer that I would get and then of course I got to take some points off and you get this kind of expression so the right answer is the following okay when I plug in negative 1 okay using parentheses for X I'm gonna have this set up okay now what's going on here what's the we got a couple different operations here what did the student do okay well they did multiplication if they're interpreting negative times a negative this is, this is true, negative times a negative is a positive, so I get one squared, but they're doing multiplication before uh, powers or exponents. Remember, you got a couple things here. You got multiplication and powers, so you gotta be thinking about the order of operations. Remember PEMDAS, PEMDAS, right? So parentheses, then exponents, and then multiplication or division. So when we're looking at what's going on here, okay, we have, a power or exponent and multiplication. This is multiplication. This is a power. Okay, so we have to do this part first. Okay, and this little negative here is really like a negative one. So let's go ahead and do that. So negative one squared is a positive one, right? That's negative one times negative one. That's positive one. So this is going to be negative. Uh, a negative or the opposite of a positive one, which is just going to be a negative one. Okay, so don't have to, you know, we could break this out if we really, really wanted to think about this. This is like a negative one times this value or the opposite of it. There's different ways to uh, think about it, and you should know all the different ways. A negative sign, you can think of it as being opposite as well, right? So here, this negative 1 squared is going to be positive 1. So negative 1 times a positive 1, our answer is still going to be negative 1. Bottom line, it's negative, okay? So 
very easy to mistake to uh, very easy error, uh, mistake to make, right? This is correct. This is not correct. All right, we've got the same number but different signs. It's so, you know, you just see these patterns over years of grading, you know, um, you know, math quizzes and tests and and whatnot. And I stress to students, hey, if you're paying attention and you're taking great notes and listening to the teacher, you're gonna be you're gonna fo be focused on plugging in values, using parentheses, following the order of operations, and just working these problems down. And just something as deceiving as this, these type of problems, there are, you know, there's plenty of room to make mistakes if you're not focused and really concentrating and really applying all the basic things that you've learned previous to basic algebra stuff. So like the order of operations at PEMDAS uh, business that you remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, if you don't know what I'm talking about, is, um, well, just, just think about what it says. It's the order of operations. So in mathematics, if I have the number seven and three, what can I do with that? Well, I can perform various mathematical operations. I can add, I can subtract those numbers, multiply, divide, I could take powers, etc. Okay, so these are mathematical um, operators, mathematical operations, and when we're, they're all kind of bundled in into one problem, we need to know what do we do first? Do we do multiplication? Do we do addition first? Do division first? Well, that's what PEMDAS is about. So if you're not familiar with the order of operations or a little bit shaky on it, you definitely need to review this. And the big thing here, assuming that you do know the order of operations, is anytime you're evaluating a, an algebraic expression, a variable expression, use parentheses, okay? It will help you uh, for sure avoid making this little error that can add up, okay? We definitely wanna keep you away from these sad faces and we wanna keep you like this in your math class. Okay, so hopefully this, uh, video was educational, entertaining in some way, and maybe you made this mistake. Actually, if you did make this mistake, I'm really happy that you did because that means that, oh, okay, I'm going to help you out, right? And if you didn't make the mistake and, you know, uh, use parentheses, plugging this in, well, that's just confirmation that you're definitely, you know, on the right track in mathematics. So, Again, if you enjoyed this video in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, I've been on YouTube for quite some time, uh, at least 10 years at the time of this video. I have hundreds and hundreds of videos uh, already uh, on my channel organized in various playlists from basic to advanced mathematics. But if you really want my best uh, help, check out the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.